Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at a homemade Slim Jim antenna that I put up in the rafters of my garage a couple of weeks ago. Now I made a video about that and if you missed that video there's a link to it in the description below. So at the time I put that antenna up, my antenna analyzer was out on loan, so I hadn't had a chance to really check it out and see if it was tuned properly. Well, I have the antenna analyzer back now, so let's put the antenna analyzer on the antenna and see how things look. I have a feeling the antenna is going to be pretty close to where I need it to be, as the previous owner had used it for a while and then just kind of put it in storage. So shouldn't need to do much to it, maybe just a little bit of touch-up tuning. So I've got the antenna analyzer here. This happens to be an MFJ259C and I'm powering it with an external wall wart here and of course I've got the antenna's coax connected to the SO239 jack that's on the analyzer. So as you can see here I've currently got the analyzer set to uh, 147.75 ish on the frequency counter and we're getting an SWR of 1.1 which doesn't surprise me as the previous owner had set this antenna up to work with a repeater whose input frequency was 147.705 so I knew he was going to have it pretty close at that frequency. Now you can see that we've got no reactants and our resistance is about 60 ohms so that's actually pretty good probably don't even need to touch it. Now having said that my plan is to use this antenna on the lower part of the 2 meter band down in the packet and APRS area so let's tune the analyzer down there and see what the antenna looks like. So you can see down here at 144.30 which is pretty close to the APRS frequency I've got an SWR of 1.4, I've got a resistance of about 70 ohms, and I've got about 10 or so ohms of reactants. So still not horrible, definitely usable. The only reason I'm going to worry about that last little bit of performance is that the antenna is located in a really a non-ideal location. It's inside my garage rafters, so every little bit's going to help with this thing. So let's head up into the rafters and make some adjustments. So we're up here in the rafters of the garage, we're taking a look at the Slim Jim, and I kind of apologize for the lighting here, it's not the best, the only lighting I have is this little handheld flashlight, but hopefully it should be good enough for you guys to get an idea of what's going on here. In case you missed that original video I made on this antenna, I'll just briefly kind of show how it's mounted here. I've just got a piece of conduit screwed to one of the trusses up here. It's not exactly the most sturdy mount in the world, but this thing isn't going to experience any weather up here, so that's really not going to be an issue. So now I'll pan the camera up so you guys can kind of see the antenna in its full length. You can see it goes all the way up there and it gets pretty close to... I probably should move it down a little bit so it's not quite so close to that top rafter. It's only about three or four inches from it, but it seems to be working okay in this configuration, so I think I'm going to leave it alone. Now the first thing I'll point out is I just added this kind of ugly choke ballon, I believe is what some people call it. And all this is is five or six turns of coax on a roughly four inch diameter. And uh, this is supposed to help decouple any RF that's on the outer shield of the coax from going down the coax. There's kind of arguments as to whether or not that's effective at these frequencies or even needed on an antenna like this or if this type of configuration is effective. Uh, some people think that this should be on a PVC form or have uh, other you know characteristics to keep the coils separate and that sort of a thing. Um, I'm not sure if it's really even needed for what I'm doing but I figured it wouldn't hurt to have it so I did add it. And then up here of course is the feed point of the antenna. Now these hose clamps are more or less in the location where the previous owner had them. And like we saw on the antenna analyzer, this thing was fairly well tuned up for that repeater up in the high end of the two meter band. So in order to lower the SWR and the reactants at the low end of the two meter band, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide these clamps down just a little bit to effectively lengthen the antenna. And then we'll check it on the analyzer and see how it does.
Okay, so hopefully that's enough. Let's go down and check the analyzer and see how things look. Okay, so I'm on my third adjustment here and I think we've probably got it pretty close. I moved the driven element side down about half to maybe three quarters of an inch from where it was originally. And then over here on the tuning element side, I moved that one down maybe closer to three eighths of an inch or so. And I think we've got it pretty good now. Let's go take a look at the antenna analyzer and see what the results are. So we're back taking a look at the analyzer and you can see I'm pretty close to the APRS frequency. Let me try and get there, 14439. This thing's a little touchy so it's hard to get it exact, but you can see that in the general area we've got about a 50 ohm resistance a little bit of reactance somewhere between 4 or 5 ohms and the SWR is bouncing between 1.0 and 1.1. Okay, that's probably about as close as I'm going to get it on this frequency and I think it should work just fine there. And like I said before, it would have been fine the way it was, but I figured just for the sake of showing how this antenna is tuned, I'd go through the exercise to get it as close as I could. So taking a look up around the FM simplex calling frequency of 146.52, you can see that I've got about 90 ohms resistance, no reactance, and about a 1.5 measured SWR. So that should be sufficient for the occasional simplex contact that I may make on this antenna. Wouldn't be trying to do any FM simplex DX on this antenna. Any simplex that I'd be doing would be, be just the local group of guys that I talk with. So let's go up to the top of the band just to see how it'll do up there. There is one repeater in the area that I might consider using this antenna to contact. And if we go up there roughly to its transmit frequency, which is 147.705, I think, roughly, so we're pretty close now, you can see that we've got a resistance of about 78 ohms or so, 75, whatever, in that area. We've got the reactance is a little higher, up around 15 ohms, and the SWR is now 1.6. So of course that means that the antenna isn't as efficient up here at the top of the band as it was before I started tuning it, but that was the whole idea, was to get the antenna efficient lower down, where I'm going to be using it most of the time, but still usable up here in case I need it for some reason on a repeater. So that's pretty much going to wrap things up for tuning up my homebrew Slim Jim for use in the lower part of the 2 meter band. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which you'll find linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.